Does your RV battery need to be replaced and you're not sure what your options are? Well, I'm going to share with you what our options were in this episode of Travels with Delaney. Welcome back everyone. So recently our battery was failing in our 2018 New Camp Tab 400. And so I started researching what my options would be and decided maybe I'd make this short video to share with you what I found out. Stay to the end of this video and I'm gonna share with you what we decided on for our trailer. All right, let's head on inside and talk about what the options were that we were looking at. So let's begin this discussion by looking at the three major types of batteries that I considered when replacing our battery here in our Tab 400. And the first one that most people consider is the lead acid batteries. Now, the flooded batteries are going to be your cheapest option, and that's what a lot of trailers actually come with. What a lot of people don't realize is most trailer manufacturers don't actually install the batteries in new trailers. They are shipped to the dealerships without a battery, and then the dealers are the ones that actually put those batteries into the trailer for purchasing. And what I find over our 15 years of RVing and purchasing RVs is typically they are going to put in the cheapest batteries they can find, which are going to be those flood lead acid batteries. Now, they're going to work fine, but here's the thing. Number one, they tend to have much lower amp hours, and that means you're not gonna be able to run off that battery for nearly as long as with other battery options. In fact, I remember we purchased a, a trailer about five years ago, and when I started investigating the battery, it had a whopping 55 amp hour battery in it, which isn't much at all. Because here's the thing about lead acid batteries. Those flooded batteries can only be discharged up to 50%. So that means if you have a 55 amp hour battery, you can actually only use about 25, um, 26 amp hours and to safely then recharge it back up. Because once you start going below that 50%, you're actually harming the life of that battery. So, you know, dealerships just look to put those batteries in to get you going, but those batteries, quite frankly, just are not really designed for boondocking. And if you like to boondock or dry camp, then that's something to consider. And with those flooded lead acid batteries, there is maintenance required. You need to periodically pop the tops off and fill them up with distilled water to keep Keep your batteries well maintained. If you don't, you're going to end up killing that battery and be replacing it a lot sooner than you would expect to. So flooded lead acid batteries tend to be pretty much the standard with most RVs these days. Now your higher end RVs probably won't have those, but for the entry level and the mid range trailers, it's pretty common to find that. And if you decide that's what you want to replace with, again, you can run down to your local Menards or probably Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a deep cycle marine grade battery and replace it with fairly easily. Now let's talk about the second category of batteries, and that's the AGM. Now these are still a lead acid battery, but they are a sealed unit. And the real advantage with the AGM batteries is they are maintenance free. Unlike those flooded acid batteries where you have to continually fill them up with distilled water to keep them working safely, the AGMs are a sealed unit, no maintenance required. The downside to the AGM batteries is they are more expensive than the flooded lead acid batteries. So you're going to invest more money up front just for the sake of that maintenance. And depending on what literature you read, I've actually read that sometimes those AGM batteries won't even last as long as the cheaper uh, flooded lead acid batteries. And finally, the last type of battery that we're going to talk about today is the lithium batteries. Now the lithium batteries are maintenance free and they can actually be discharged almost down to zero um, or real darn close. And they're great for boondocking or dry camping, but the real downside to the lithium batteries is the upfront cost. So a lot of times when people see a thousand dollars for a hundred amp hour battery, they instantly take it off the list because compared to that flooded lead acid battery that may run you a hundred to $150, that is a significant chunk of change. But like I said, there are real advantages to going with lithium these days. If you do a lot of off the grid camping or dry camping or boondocking where you're not gonna have electricity and you need a battery that does really well as far as discharge and recharge, 
um, and you're working with solar, then lithium may be the, the route to go. So let's talk about what we ended up doing here in our 2018 New Camp Tab 400. If you own a 2018 New Camp Tab 400, listen up because your options are a little different than the normal trailer owner. In 2018, New Camp was putting in a 235 amp hour AGM battery installed under the bed um, of our trailer. The great news is with New Camp, they're putting the Tab 400 batteries under the bed, they're inside, away from the elements, and that is awesome. But in that first year of production, they did not vent those batteries because technically an AGM battery doesn't need to be vented. The problem is if you ever decided to switch to a flooded lead acid battery, you need to vent it, which means you're going to need to put it in a sealed battery case. You're going to need to run hosing over to the sidewall, drill a hole and have a vent so any gases can naturally vent outside. So as we were looking at our options when our AGM battery started failing us this fall, we immediately took the flooded lead acid batteries off the list. And why? Number one, even though they're cheaper than all the other options, we would have had to add it venting to our trailer. Number two, I don't want a flooded lead acid battery under the bed where I'm sleeping. Now, not saying you can't do that, but for me personally, I just don't want that type of battery in my trailer. There's a reason why they typically put those outside on the tongue of most trailers. And again, the whole idea is for us, we have 200 watts of solar on the roof. We like to do a lot of off the grid camping and to put some low amp hour batteries in here that you can only discharge up to 50% and then I've got to maintain them. Yeah, never even an option for us. But that doesn't mean it won't be an option for you because if you're not doing off the grid camping, then maybe you wanna go ahead and go with that lower price battery and you'll just maintain it um, on a regular basis and they'll last you a really long time. So option number two for us was to um, go ahead and upgrade to what New Camp is now using in their Tab 400s, which is two six volts batteries to create a 12 volt system and those were still an AGM battery. The problem was when I looked into it, um, golf cart batteries or those six volt batteries tend to be taller than their 12 volt counterpart. And so in order to add the two six volts to a 2018 tab, you actually have to do quite a bit of carpentry work to in essence lower the floor under the bed to get the height you need for that battery. We were quoted about $700 from New Camp just to lower that to set us up to put in the batteries. And then I was gonna have to go ahead and purchase two um, six volt AGM batteries and then the additional cabling that we'd need to connect the two together. So I figured that we were gonna be well over $1,300, $1,400 to do that project. And so we immediately checked that off the list. A third option was to go ahead and just replace our 12 volt AGM battery with another 12 volt AGM battery. Now, when I was looking for one of comparable size, ours was a 235 amp hour. I was seeing prices online anywhere from 400 to $600 per battery. And most of those batteries only come with three years or less warranty on them, which means we could potentially be replacing that battery every two to three years. Because remember, we've only gotten two years out of our current battery. So then finally, I started looking at what was gonna be my preferred battery, but I also knew it was gonna be the most costly. And that was the lithium option. And I immediately began reaching out to Battleborn batteries um, to talk to them because they're kind of the standard bearer. You see them all over uh, YouTube. These full-time RVers are switching over their rigs to Battleborn. But with Battleborn, you're looking at $950 for a um, 100 amp hour battery. Now, the good news is with that 100 amp hour battery, you're gonna get to use about 90 of those amp hours safely and not hurt your battery. Um, and that was almost comparable to our 235 amp hour AGM where I could only take it down to about 50% without harming the battery for longevity purposes. But then I also started, once I reached out to Battleborn and gave them all the specs of my trailer, they informed me that I was going to need to upgrade my converter. The current converter, they said, would not charge their Battleborn batteries more than about 70%. And what's the point of having a really good battery if you can't charge it all the way? So 
the option was to add a 55 amp converter to the trailer and then they said we'd be set up and with those we could continually add batteries to our battery bank depending on how many amp hours we ultimately needed now battleborn suggested to us based upon our trailer how we use it what we use when we're off grid that we needed two 100 amp hour batteries so what did we do we went lithium now it's a major investment up front, but I truly believe in the long run, the lithium is going to be a cheaper option. And here's why. So we have currently in our trailer 100 amp hours of Battleborn battery. We started with just one. We're going to eventually add on. We know that. And as of right now, we have about $1,600 invested in the new battery system. So what does that include? Well, we purchased one of the 100 amp hour lithium batteries from Battleborn, and that was around 800, I think it was $875. Here's a little tip for you. If you're a member of the Escapees RV Club, there is some really good discounts over at Battleborn. So good that the membership will pay for itself with just one battery purchase. Um, I believe it was currently at the time of the filming of this video, because you know how discounts are. They can change, and if you're watching this two years from now, it may not even exist. But as of today, January 5th, 2020, we saved, I believe it was $75 on our battery alone. They also give you a percentage off of any accessories. So the other thing I had to order from Battleborn was that 55 um, amp converter from Progressive Dynamics so that we will be able to fully charge that battery. So we had a little over $1,100 in the battery and the converter, and I had those shipped to us here in Indiana. Now, originally my plan was to install it myself. And I was thinking, how hard can it be? I've changed out a converter once before in another trailer, and changing out a battery is actually very simple. The problem was when it arrived, what I didn't realize was we weren't just changing the bottom part of the converter, that we actually had to change out the fuse panel as well. And that's a lot of wires for a guy that's not an electrician. And so my better senses kicked in and decided that I would have it professionally installed. And so we worked with our friends down at Princess Craft RV in Round Rock, Texas to get us an appointment while we were in Texas for Christmas vacation. And that ended up costing us right around $500 to have everything installed. So they put in the new converter, they put in the new battery, and that way I know the system is set up, wired properly, and we won't have any issues. So now we're at about $1,600 total, and the plan is before summer we are going to add a second lithium battery to put us at 200 amp hours. So go ahead and do some simple math. We're gonna add on about another $900. We're gonna have about $2,500 in this battery system. So ask yourself, do you wanna invest that kind of money? Do you do enough boondocking or off the grid camping to justify that kind of an investment? Now, if you only periodically stop at a Cracker Barrel Walmart for one night and then you're back into a commercial campground with electric hookups, I'm going to say it's probably not worth it. But if you're like us and you like to stay in campgrounds that don't have electricity or you Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, that type of thing for overnight parking when you travel, then maybe you want to look at that. Because here's how I'm justifying it. Battleborn batteries come with a 10-year warranty. Yes, I'll repeat it. 10-year warranty. And so that tells me they don't warranty something if they don't think it's gonna last at least that long. So if I can get 10 years out of my batteries and then I go back and look at one AGM, let's say 200 amp hours gonna run me four to $600. And if it's only warrantied for three years, that means I'm gonna buy three of those AGM batteries over the course of the 10 year period of the Battleborn battery. So simple math says, 12 to 1800 dollars where i'm having to change my battery potentially every three years and remember i only got two years out of the current agm battery or i could go ahead and make that investment into our trailer um for like i said i think i have about uh where was i at 2500 when we when all said and done um so it's a little bit more maybe but I don't have the frustration of having batteries potentially go dead every three years and having to change them out. And don't forget the cost of batteries is 
probably going to continue to go up. Uh, the other thing is, if I put in a 200 amp hour AGM battery, I'm only actually getting about 100 amp hours of power out of it because remember we can only discharge down to about 50 percent if we want to keep that battery healthy and so 50 percent of 200 amp hours means i'm gonna get about 100 amp hours so with the eight the battleborn lithium batteries if i do two 100 amp hour batteries i'm gonna get a lot more power because i can take those down to about i can use about 180 amp hours maybe 190 amp hours safely and do no harm with the battleborn batteries so that's how we came to that conclusion that we looked at not the upfront cost we looked at the lifetime cost and we looked at things like frustration that we might have with other battery types now i understand that investing that much money may not be an option for you and it may not even be necessary based upon the type of camping you're doing what i really just wanted to do today with you was lay out your options and some of the pros and cons of each and hopefully you found this information useful so that when the time comes and you need to replace your battery you'll at least have a starting point of what your options are and what to look for and specifically if you're a 2018 new camp tab 400 owner hopefully i've laid out some of the options for you because your situation is a little bit different since you're going to have to make some modifications to your trailer if you want to go flooded lead acid or if you want to go to the two six volt agms like new camp currently is using or maybe you'll just consider to replace with a 12 volt agm or do the upgrade like us if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you've got anything to add to this discussion, because I am by no means a battery expert, I would love to hear them because it'll help everybody out here in the community. Let me know what kind of battery you have and if you've ever replaced your batteries. And what are you thinking when it's time to replace your battery? Until next time, everybody, we'll see you on down the road. Good night.